That's the reason why we hear that the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ is for all of us to learn how to love one another. Why? Because the next thing that God would want to send us for is go. Make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Why? Because this is really the way for all of us to become spiritually significant in our world today. We have to show our significance in our world today as believers of God. Why? Because when we were all baptized, as it was mentioned by the well, we received our sacred identity, who we are. And included in that is why we are here. We are the children of God. And as children of God, we must share the life of God, our Father, so that the work that Jesus has begun will continue on. Remember when he was crucified on the cross, he said, it is finished. Simply because the meaning of that, the mission of Jesus is now completed. Your work must now commence, must now begin. Knowing the mission of our Lord Jesus Christ is very critical. And whenever it is driven by our love, then we are on the same and the right side. That is the mission of Jesus that we are trying to live. Now, aligning our personal mission with the mission of Jesus is the spirituality that we all need to look into. Because at times we really, we really cannot figure out how we come into this situation unless we gave ourselves a chance at times to ponder and think, how, what did God do to my life? And that is something that I would like all of you really to, to understand in the second presentation. I will be talking about something that what is passionate in your life? That second aspect of Jesus' mission is more directional, intentional. Yes, it must be driven by our love for God and our love for one another. But it has to be something that may be with sense of intentionality that we are making, helping one another to become disciples of Jesus, partners in the mission of Jesus. Because this is who we are, because the mission that God entrusted to us is, His work that He has begun, we will continue. And that is the work of all of us right now. And aligning our personal life right now is very important. And understanding what is your personal mission right now. If I have to ask you that, do you know? And how did you come to find it out? So these are just suggestions. Question your life. What drives your life? What really drives your life right now? Or what ignites a fire within your soul? That enables you to do more things that led you to reach out to other people. For instance, Noel shared to us, how did he come to that point in his life that now he is now willing to go anywhere where he is sent? How did it connect with what he wants and what God wants? Is it the desire 
to make a positive impact on the world? What is your passion? Is it the longing to serve others with love and compassion? Whatever it may be, know that your purpose is intricately connected to the mission of Jesus. And this is what I have learned. Whatever is my passion is, that is my mission. Ask yourself, what are you passionate about? And you can answer this without somebody telling you about it. You can answer this really going back to yourself and you will come to know that knowing what you are passionate about is the purpose of your life. And aligning your life purpose with the mission of Jesus, first of all, these are the takeaways that I would want you to, to think. It requires a deeper inner journey. You have to ponder and reflect this on your own. Nobody can tell you that. Speak to your heart. Ponder on how you are able to come to this point of your life right now. I can, I, I have no idea that I'll be here in this America, in this country. I have no plan that I will be speaking to the people here in America. It involves introspection, prayer, surrendering to a higher calling. Aligning our purpose with the mission of Jesus would require bending over. And it means letting go of selfish desires, the ego-driven ambitions in favor of a greater good. That is easily said than that. Mahira po yan. Ibebend over. Sa salita lang yan, napaka daling sabihin. But it requires real awakening. It requires a real understanding. A deep inner conversation with God. It means embodying qualities of kindness, forgiveness, empathy in all aspects of your life. Wow. Just a simple example. The mission of Jesus for all of us is to forgive one another, correct? As the Father, as Jesus has forgiven us, so we must also forgive one another, correct? Are we doing that? By doing that, we are aligning our sacred purpose with the mission of Jesus. That's how it happens. Surrendering our hurts. Surrendering our fears. Secondly, we align our, life, our lives with the mission of Jesus and it would require truly cultivating a heart of service. That we must be willing to serve. And I know many of you, I have witnessed many of you have that heart. You have the heart of service. And that's the reason why Filipino ministry in our diocese of Baltimore is really growing. Because we have the heart of serving others in different ways. In different ways. We have a big heart for others. And when our heart for others is being exercised and driven by our love for God, I tell you, it becomes 
it becomes so powerful and it transforms not only yourself, it transforms people. It transforms environment, our environment, our surrounding. It transforms community. And that's, I believe, what the Filipino ministry is looking for, that we may have all the heart to serve one another so that it can transform not only ourselves, but the lives of others and the community where we are sent. So look around and you will see there is a need. Whether it's volunteering at a local shelter, lending a listening ear to a friend in need, or simply offering a smile to a stranger. Every act of kindness is a step towards fulfilling the mission of Jesus. Aligning your life purpose with the mission of Jesus requires living with intentionality and integrity. So let your words and actions reflect the values of love. Love one another. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Love one another. It must reflect that sense of compassion and humility. Kaya nga po, in our Filipino ministry, we are trying to prove ourselves if we are leaders, we become mission partners of Jesus, and our leadership would reflect our servant heart, our willingness to serve others without thinking of return. Our willingness to serve others even in the most difficult way. Napakahirap po nun. And if we are willing and able to do that, God is smiling at us. We see the importance, love, compassion, and humility that Jesus embodied. By so doing this, we become beacon of light in a world that often feels despairing and in darkness. And finally, aligning your life purpose is not a one-time event, but rather a lifelong journey. And this is what I ask and urge each one of us to remain steady in our faith, to remain truly intentional in everything that we do, driven by a love for God, that we are all living our purpose in accordance with the purpose of our Lord Jesus Christ, it requires dedication, perseverance, and willingness to grow and evolve continually. Let us not fall into the trap that the world lays for each one of us, and that trap is Yes, we engage into partnership with mission. Yes, we have reached our leadership role. Then once you have reached your leadership role, you change. Because you're the leader. As you walk this path, the Lord is assuring us that you are never alone, meaning, don't forget me. I am still walking with you. When we have reached our leadership ambition, take note, the Lord walks with you. And the Lord says, don't forget me. In the process, the Spirit of Jesus walks beside you, guiding your every step of the way. And that is the wisdom that God would want each one of us really to embrace. He walks with us. He will never 
leave us alone. But we must recognize that he's there. Leadership at times can be like a wine, a scotch. <laughs> that can make you drunk. And the Lord's desire is that you may not forget that I'm walking with you. And the desire of the Lord is He walks with you to shepherd you, to guide you. Because without me, you can do nothing. So, my friends, in conclusion, before I call our share, I urge you to embrace that, that profound opportunity to align your life's purpose with the mission of Jesus. Unafraid. We trust. Again, love is your guiding principle. Everything has to be driven by our love for God. And compassion must be the compass of your actions. And service should be the true north, the principle that you are always going to take. In doing so, you will not only discover a deeper sense of purpose and fulfillment, but also contribute to the realization of the work that Jesus has begun. A world filled with God's peace, love, and abundance for all. So I'd like to call a couple from Bukas Lobs Dios from Washington, D.C. Meiji and Wancho Kahayat to come forward, please. Thank you, Father Pete. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Wancho Cahayon, and beside me is my beautiful wife, Miji. <laughs> Father Jojo, that's not a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> We've been married for 33 years and are blessed with uh, four grown up boys. We are members of the BLD Covenant community that regularly meets at Our Lady of Victory in Washington, D.C. for Mass, praise and worship, and teachings. BLD stands for Bukas Loob Sa Dios, or Open to the Spirit of God. BLD is more than a prayer group. It is a global Catholic covenant community that originated in Manila, Philippines. So our sharing is our personal experience with the mission of Jesus, that when we submit our plans to the plans of God, great things happen. Miji and I were appointed as stewards of the evangelization apostolate of BLD Washington beginning in October of last year. Our journey with BLD began in 2002 when we attended marriage encounter number two. Back then, we were a small group, and we happily took turns uh, doing various responsibilities, from setting up for worship to singing praises and cleaning up afterwards. BLD became our joyful and loving community, where we witnessed God's presence firsthand. Over the years. We serve primarily in the marriage life of Boston ministry while supporting other areas like service, intercessory, and praise. But as the community grew, so did the challenges. We faced personality differences with leaders, feeling that our suggestions weren't always welcomed or considered. Despite these challenges, 
We were entrusted with shepherding the marriage encounter number nine class, or ME9 for short, guiding them toward covenant discipleship. However, our leadership approach was questioned, marking the beginning of a painful period of discernment. We were later assigned to the Mark 10 ministry caring for children ages 5 to 11. This proved to be a difficult task, especially for me, as it often meant sacrificing time with our children in order to take care of other children. So balancing our BLD commitments with family life became increasingly challenging, leading us to take a break from BLD to focus more on our growing boys and participate in parish activities to stay connected to the church. Additionally, we departed the BLT community because of an unbearable burden we took upon ourselves. Our style of shepherding does not conform with others who were in leadership positions back then. Ultimately, we felt compelled to take a sabbatical leave when we sensed or we perceived a shift in its direction, one that seemed disconnected from the guiding influence of God's Spirit and the mission of Jesus. As our children grew up and began living their own lives, we were ready for the next chapter in our walk with the Lord. We prayed and sought guidance from our spiritual director and a few trusted friends. I'm not naming names because they're all here. <laughs> should we return to the community we have believed in or should we do something else? The pandemic brought a shift in perspective, particularly after the loss of my cousin to COVID. Recognizing the brevity of life, I immersed myself in daily mass virtual retreats, and Ignatian reflections to discern God's will for me. During occasional participation in the Friday praise and worship, I noticed Miji's excitement and her hunger for a spirit-led praise and worship. But I wanted to get a confirmation from the Lord before committing fully. In 2021, during one of our virtual prayers, I joked with our ME9 friends about returning to BLD. But I said what, what I thought was a highly improbable condition. See, BLD has five apostolates and they're each led by a steward couple. And so this was, that was the first year that ME9 was eligible to become leaders. And so what I told them was, if at least two couples were emerged as leaders, we will rejoin the community. So the emergence came later and one couple made it. So I accepted it as a sign for us to wait. Unexpectedly, a health issue led to a leader stepping down a few months later, prompting the BLD Global Servant Leaders to discern an additional couple as a replacement. And among 21 classes, it was remarkable that a couple from ME9 was selected, the same class we had shepherded for several years. Now there were two ME9 couples in leadership. This providential occurrence affirmed our path back to BLD. We felt compelled to honor our promise to our ME9 class but we were anxious of how we would be treated after more than eight years of inactivity. Would the community question us on why we were back or would they welcome us? Seeking confirmation, I reflected on Jesus' example of unconditional love. The tension between God's plan and my plan was very strong. Just as Jesus served us out of love, irrespective of our worthiness, I recognize my call to serve each community member with the same spirit of love. We were warmly welcomed back by the new leaders, 
Although we wanted to quietly rejoin the community as regular members, the leaders asked us to take a new role, like becoming worship leaders, leading the service ministry, and supporting the Life in the Spirit seminar. Humbled by this new perspective, a testament to God's plan, we rediscovered joy in serving the community. The journey taught us the true meaning of trusting the leading of the Spirit, servanthood, and importance of community in our spiritual growth. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 13. When we align our plans to the plan and mission of God, beautiful things start to happen. We can do things right and do right things. I used to pride myself on being in full control of my life, meticulously analyzing every detail to solve my problems. But through my journey of faith, I've learned the importance of surrendering to Christ and trusting in His wisdom and providence. By seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, I strive to emulate Jesus' commitment to communion with God and obedience to His will. And when it comes to giving, I used to limit my generosity to the confines of my tithes on Sundays. However, inspired by Jesus' compassion, I now go extra mile by feeding the hungry at homeless shelters, donating to marginalized communities, and extending my generosity beyond my surplus. Additionally, and this is quite hard, I've learned the power of forgiveness through Jesus' teaching. Despite being wronged by others, I have chosen to forgive, releasing bitterness, and resentment. By extending grace and reconciliation, I mirror Jesus' example of forgiveness on the cross and embody the principles of love and reconciliation taught in the scriptures. We have experienced a profound shift in our perspective on serving others. Instead of seeking recognition, we find fulfillment in selflessly serving others, prioritizing their needs above our own. The shift aligns with Jesus' call to servant leadership and sacrificial love, exemplified when he humbly washed the feet of his disciples. Lastly, one of the greatest blessings we received is the ability to love those who have hurt us. Inspired by Jesus' radical ethic of love, we responded to conflict with love, even towards those who we have disagreements with. By turning the other cheek and seeking reconciliation rather than retaliation, we embody Jesus' command to love one another as he has loved us. Doing what is right, good, and fair has become my initial reaction to things that are contrary to my plan. By turning the other cheek and seeking reconciliation rather than retaliation, I strive to embody Jesus' command to love one's enemies and pray for those who persecute them. Now, as evangelization stewards of our community, our focus has shifted to active service that transforms, knowing that by serving the mission of Jesus and through the BLT community, we are truly serving and loving Him. And by serving Him in God's way, we are pruned and transformed. Now we have been blessed to look at all things in the light of our love for God and God's love for us. Now we believe that in all things, we can love and serve the Lord. Now we believe that aligning our plans with the plans or mission of Jesus 
would bring beautiful things into our human and spiritual lives. This I pray. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities you have given me, Jenai, to serve and minister to others, to be your hands and feet in the world. Thank you for the moments when we felt your presence near, comforting us in times of trial and rejoicing us with us in moments of joy. Lord, as we continue this journey of faith and service, we pray for your continued guidance and direction. Help us always to align our actions and decisions with your teachings and examples so that we may reflect your love, compassion, and righteousness in all that we do. All for your greater glory. We ask this to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing your heart with us today and in your journey and how you responded beautifully. It reminds reminded me of, of a scripture that I oftentimes pray as, as well um, as a litany. I, I make it a litany for me because in, in 1 Corinthians 13, if I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I'm a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Who wants to be that, right, if you don't have love? If I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and knowledge, you have no knowledge, and I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but not love, I'm nothing. And I take that to heart, I'm nothing. If I don't love, if I'm serving, I'm nothing. And if I give away all I have, if I got so much, I give it away. And if I deliver my body to be burned, but not love, I gain nothing. For sure. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not jealous or boastful, but it continues. And just replace your name with that. Wow, it really convicts me. So I love it. I love the, what, what you shared. Um, I can see the joy. The joy, and that's one of the fruits of, of your misery. So let's take a moment now to reflect on what we heard. And uh, here is the question for our second reflection. We have 15 minutes. What challenges have you faced while serving in the mission of Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> 